welcome to another reading with Mr White with me, Mr White, and this, The Nowhere Emporium by Ross Mackenzie. We're on to chapter 17 today, but before we do that, let's think about what happened in chapter 16. It was Ellie's birthday party, so she sent out the invite to uh, all the people that she wanted to be there. Strange invites, they were kind of animals in cages that then fluttered off and woke people up in the middle of the night and sent them to her party. But somebody sneaked in, didn't they? They um, they took an invite from somebody and into the Nowhere Emporium they walked. And that somebody was none other than Vindictus Sharp. Now, we haven't seen Vindictus Sharp for quite a long time in this book. But I think what we do know is there is some kind of tension between uh, Vindictus Sharp and Mr Silver. Perhaps we're about to find out a little bit more. Chapter 17 is called Ghosts. Sit down, get comfortable, let's go. <clears throat> Ellie, this is your fault. Daniel stormed down a passageway of shimmering black brick, trailing Ellie behind. Sorry, she said, trying not to laugh. You're not great, really. This, said Daniel, grabbing a handful of the black lace ruffles spilling from his orange suit. This does not look great. How could it possibly look great? He turned and strode off with as much dignity as he could. <clears throat> How many times do you want me to apologise? asked Ellie, catching him up. Papa asked me what I thought you might like to wear. I couldn't resist. Don't tell me you wouldn't have done the same to me, because I know you would. <clears throat> I'll get you for this. They reached a grand set of arched black doors. A single word had been painted on its nameplate in flowery letters. Ballroom. Daniel pulled on the golden door handles and the doors swung open. A huge circular wonder opened up before him with a marble floor and a high domed ceiling of deepest black finished with scattered golden stars. The wall of the ballroom was made entirely of glass, circular and continuous, looking out towards the illusion of a clear night sky and an impossibly large full moon. The door was crowded with guests in orange, black and gold. Many had been cornered by members of the Emporium staff who were excited by the rare opportunity to speak freely with those from beyond the shop's walls. Ghostly waiters walked among the guests. They carried golden trays neatly stacked with goblets of orange liquid, piles of chocolate bats and licorice spiders Apples coated in rich caramel and chocolate, all filling the room with delicious, sweet scents. Oh, sounds lovely, it's making me hungry. A hush began to fall over the crowd. Heads turned towards a raised circular platform in the centre of the floor where a ghostly brass band had assembled. And then the band began to play. Waves of music swept the ballroom, en enveloping or enveloping guests and staff alike, carrying them off into waltzes and spins and toe-tapping, high-kicking barn dances. Daniel could not resist the urge to dance. He felt a hand on his arm, found himself on the floor with Anja, the snake charmer. They danced until Daniel could dance no more, and he went to the edge of the room to catch his breath. Ellie showed no signs of stopping. She hadn't left the dance floor all evening, and it seemed to Daniel that this was the happiest he'd seen her look. A waiter pass passed by, offering him a goblet. What is it? he asked, trying not to be too distracted by the fact he could see through the waiter. Pumpkin mead. Daniel took a goblet and sipped the liquid. It warmed his insides, like drinking the memory of an autumn night sat by the bonfire. He had drained the last drop from the glass when he turned and clipped the arm of an extremely tall man in a charcoal suit, dropping his goblet with a clatter. I think I know who this is. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, said Daniel. But when he straightened up, the man was already gone. <sighs> Mr Silver walked to the far side of the ballroom, sips of pumpkin mead warming him as he watched his daughter watching everyone else. He cut through the circles of chattering guests, dodging waltzing couples, catching snippets of stolen conversation. He smiled as he passed Caleb, who had cornered several guests from the outside world. <clears throat> Tell me, is it true that the moon out there is made from cheese? And if so, what sort of cheese? Nothing too crumbly or runny, I bet. 
Silver stopped and finished his mead, glancing up at the chandelier high above. Something in the corner of his eye bothered him. He turned his head. Everything, the music and the chatter, the graceful movement of the dancing guests, the waiters and the gleaming chandelier, seemed to stop. Mr Silver's eyes fixed upon the blue eyes of the man striding through the crowd towards him. He recognised him at once. As Vindictus Sharp approached, he removed his bowler hat, stopping so close to Silver that their chests almost touched. The air crackled and sparked around them. Oh, I could just imagine this in a film, couldn't you? I really hope they make this into a film. Fingers crossed. Mr Silver's face was as colourless as one of his ghostly waiters. His mouth was shut tight, his expression frozen, unread unreadable. You are a difficult man to find, Lucian, said Sharp. <clears throat> I do my best, Mr Silver whispered. Sharp's mouth curled into something that might have been a smile and might have been a sneer. He leaned in slowly, deliberately, and whispered something into Mr Silver's ear. <clears throat> then he straightened up once more. He waited. At first, Mr Silver did nothing but look at the floor. When he raised his head at last, his face was heavy with sadness. He managed a slow nod. Sharp offered a handshake. When their hands touched, light around the hall began to flicker. A few bulbs blew out, spitting shards of glass among the feet of the guests, who gasped and shrieked and laughed, believing it to be part of the entertainment. A flash of white teeth from Sharp, and he turned and began to walk away through the crowd. Mr Silver watched him as he left the ballroom, standing frozen among the sea of sparkling dancers. Oh, dun, dun, dun. What has just happened there? Something magical, something uh, intro, well, more than interesting, I think. Something very dramatic, I think. What did they say to each other? Okay, he whispered something in Mr Silver's ear. What was it that he whispered? And then Mr Silver nodded his head and then shook his hand. What could it be? It looks like they've done a deal, but I do not know what. If you think you know, let me know in the comments below. I know lots of you have been doing that recently, so thank you very much. Next chapter is chapter 18, A Parting of Ways. And we haven't done this for a while, but we are going back in time to Edinburgh, May 1890. So perhaps we're going to find out a little bit more about um, sharp and silver and why there's this tension between the two of them. Um, I'll see you next time. See you later then. Bye bye.